In 649, Emperor Taizong died. If any of his concubines did not have children, she would be forced to become a Buddhist nun and to spend the rest of her life in Ganye Temple. Wu Zhitian was one of these women, but unlike others, this was just the beginning of her story. Wu Zhitian was from a wealthy family. She was well educated in many areas, such as politics, literature, and music. At the age of fourteen, she became the concubine of Emperor Taizong. Unlike most of the concubines who appeared to be gentle, Wu Zhitian had a tough personality, and she dared show it to the emperor. Emperor Taizong had a horse named Lion Stallion. It was so large and strong, no one could get on its back. Wu Zhitian said to the emperor, "I only need three things to control it: an iron whip, an iron hammer, and a sharp dagger. First, I will whip the horse. If it doesn't work, I will hammer its head. If it still doesn't work, I will cut its throat." Interestingly, the emperor admired her for her bravery, but Wu Zhitian still did not win the favor of the emperor. She remained to be a low-ranking concubine and did not have any children. Later, Emperor Taizong was sick. His youngest son Li Zhi came to take care of the emperor regularly. He met Wu Zhitian and found her attractive. The two soon fell in love secretly. In 649, Emperor Taizong died from illness. Li Zhi succeeded the throne as Emperor Gaozong. Because Wu Zhitian did not have any children, she was sent to Ganye Temple to serve as a Buddhist nun. That year, she was 25 years old. Although Emperor Gaozong liked Wu Zhitian, he dared not do anything about it. A year later, on the anniversary of Emperor Taizong's death. Emperor Gaozong visited Ganye Temple to pray for his father. There, he met Wu Zhitian again. He realized that he still liked her and wanted to bring her back to the palace. However, as Wu Zhitian was the concubine of his father, he hesitated. At that time, Emperor Gaozong's favorite concert was Consort Xiao. His Empress Empress Wang was jealous and wanted to defeat her. Therefore, Empress Huang supported the emperor to bring Wu Zhitian back, so that Wu Zhitian could help her defeat Consort Xiao and win back the favor of the emperor. In the same year, Wu Zhitian returned to the palace and became the concubine of Emperor Gaozong. In the next year, she gave birth to a son. Later, she was granted the title Zhao Yi, which was a high-ranking concubine title. The emperor adored Wu Zhitian so much, and she was exclusively favored. That was beyond Empress Huang's expectation. She was angry and decided to join forces with Consort Xiao to defeat Wu Zhitian. Later, Empress Huang was accused of using witchcraft to curse Wu Zhitian. The emperor was furious and immediately deposed both Empress Huang and Consort Xiao. In 655, Wu Zhitian became the empress when she was 44 years old. In 660, Emperor Gaozong suffered from an illness that he always had painful headaches. Therefore, he began to have Wu Zhitian to handle political affairs. For 18 years, Wu Zhitian and Emperor Gaozong ruled the country together. Wu Zhitian sat behind the pearl screen behind Emperor Gaozong during all the imperial meetings. Wu Zhitian was well educated and capable. She controlled the imperial power and often made the decisions independently. She also deprived the chancellors of many powers by setting up her own political elite group. In 675, as Emperor Gaozong's illness worsened, he wanted to have Wu Zhitian formally rule the countries as a regent. However, that received strong opposition from the chancellor and many other officials because they could not accept a female leader. Therefore, Emperor Gaozong gave up this idea. 
The emperor finally died in 683. The son of Wu Zetian, Li Xian, took the throne as Emperor Zongzhong. Wu Zetian became the empress dowager and the regent. The real power was still in her hand. But Emperor Zhongzhong wanted to get rid of Wu Zetian's control and to gain more power by promoting his empress family. He even appointed his father-in-law as the chancellor. When Wu Zetian noticed that the emperor began to disobey her, she quickly deposed him and put him under house arrest. She replaced him with her youngest son Li Dan as Emperor Rui Zhong. Since then, Wu Zetian controlled all the political power again. In the second year, rebellions occurred in various places. Wu Zetian managed to suppress them to show her capability as a strong leader. To further strengthen her power, she set up a system of secret mail boards and secret police. She encouraged officials to inform against others. If the information was accepted by Wu Zetian, The informant would be promoted. Even if the information was not accurate, the informant would not be punished. The system created horror among many officials, but to Wu Zetian, it was a very effective measure to eliminate a bunch of incompetents and people that were against her. Although it seems that Wu Zetian had already controlled all the power. She knew that it was difficult and unimaginable for a woman to be the emperor. She needed to have the persuasive rationale to seize the power. She needed to make people believe that she was the one chosen by the god. In 688, under Wu Zetian's arrangement, her official obtained a precious stone written with X words, meaning that a female would take the throne to continue the country's prosperity and success forever. Wu Zetian was glad she named this stone as Treasure Map and made it known generally. This made many people believe that Wu Zetian was the ruler sent by the god. In 690, Emperor Rui Zhong and many officials proposed Wu Zetian to be the emperor. Wu Zetian accepted it and became the first female emperor. She changed the dynasty name from Tang to Zhou and moved the capital from Chang'an to Luoyang. Once Wu Zetian took the throne, she opened power to the people. Wu Zetian created a new examination system with more subjects. Anyone could participate in the exam, and talented people would be promoted as high-ranking officials. Therefore, the power was no longer concentrated in the dominant families. During her reign, the society was stable with constant increasing birth rate. In her late years, Wu Zetian began to consider the succession issue. Wu Zetian's surname was Wu. To continue her dynasty, in theory, she could only pass the throne to Wu's family members, that were her nephews. Her two nephews also attempted to persuade Wu Zetian to let them be the crown prince, but Wu Zetian still hesitated. She asked opinion from her most trusted chancellor, Li Renjie. Li Renjie firmly opposed it and suggested her to. Give the crown prince position to her son, the previous emperor Zhongzhong, because only the mother of the emperor could be worshipped in the Tai Miao, the ancestral temple of emperor. If her nephew took the throne, she would not be respected in the temple after her death. To protect her dignity after death, Wu Zetian agreed with her chancellor. In 698, at her 74 years old, she allowed her son Zhongzhong back to the capital and made him the crown prince. Two years later, Wu Zetian moved back to the previous capital, Chang'an. In 705, when Wu Zetian was seriously ill, her son Zhongzhong took this opportunity to send his troops to mutiny against Wu Zetian and forced her to abdicate. Empress Zhongzhong took the throne once again and restored Tang Dynasty. Wu Zetian was deprived of all the power and was moved to the subsidiary palace. In the same year, Wu Zetian died at 81 years old. She was finally buried with Emperor Gaozhong in Liangshan. Their two stone monuments were facing each other. 
Emperor Xiaojun's monument was written with his great achievement, while Wu Jieting's monument had no words on it. In all these years, the tomb was never stolen. Outside her tomb, there were many life-size stone statues wearing minority group clothing. Their poses were like welcoming Wu Jietian and Emperor Gaozong. But these statues' heads were all missing. Legend said they were cut by the minority groups in later rebellions. During Huang Chao Rebellion, the 400,000 of rebel army came to Liangshan to find the entrance to the tomb, hoping to steal the valuable treasures inside. However, after searching for days, they still did not find anything. Finally, they discovered a large pile of shattered stones in the west side of the mountain. They were convinced that the entrance must be in the nearby areas. They were excited and began to dig the mound. A 40 meter deep hole was excavated, but still they failed to find the entrance and were forced to give up. In fact, the entrance was on the opposite, the east side of the mountain. It was believed that when Wu Jieten designed the tomb, she asked the workers to transport the shattered construction stones to the other side to deceive the future burglars. In 1958, during road construction, a worker suddenly found a large stone with decorated patterns that helped confirm that the area was the entrance to Wu Jietian's tomb. The scholar Guo Mo Yue requested Zhou Enlai, the first premier of the People's Republic of China, to excavate the tomb. However, Zhou Enlai was aware that technology was not advanced enough at that time. When the treasures were exposed to the air, they would decay very easily. So Zhou Enlai rejected the request and protected the area from being vandalized. Therefore, the tomb remained intact until today. According to the estimate from archaeologists, the tomb was around 5,000 cubic meter large, storing 500,000 to 800,000 kilograms of treasures. The tomb included various rooms to store the paintings, jewels, clothing, etc. At the end of the tomb was the room of Wu Jietian and Emperor Gao Zhong. It was believed that Wu Jietian's favorite portrait was also buried with her in the tomb. There has always been a big controversy over Wu Jietian's personality and the political decisions, but undoubtedly she was a legend. She never felt that her destiny has been shaped by her gender or by anyone. Wu Jietian became the one and only female emperor of China only because she had the courage and confidence to determine her own fate.